Once upon a time there was an old goat. She had seven kids. She loved them as much as only a mother can love her children. She was going to go into the forest, bring herbs and branches for lunch. She called all her children and warned them to be afraid of the evil wolf. He often pretends, but you can immediately recognize him by his rude voice and black paws. The kids understood everything and assured their mother that they would be very careful. The old goat set off calmly. Little time has passed. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door and shouted in a rude voice that the kids should immediately open it. But the kids from the rough voice realized that it was a wolf. They answered that it was not mother's voice. Her voice was kind and thin, and this voice was very rude, which means it was a wolf. Then the wolf went to the merchant and bought himself a large piece of chalk. He ate it, and his voice became thin. He came back, knocked on the door, and in a thin voice asked the kids to open it. The wolf put its paw on the window and waits. And the kids saw her and answered that the mother's paws were not black, but white, which means it was a wolf. Then the wolf ran to the bakery and asked to give him some dough. The wolf anointed his paw with the dough. The villain approached the door for the third time, put his white paw on the window and knocked. They saw the kids that the paw was white and thought that it was their mother. They opened the door, but there was a wolf in front of them. They got scared and began to scatter in all directions. One kid jumped under the table, another on the bed, the third on the stove, the fourth into the kitchen, the fifth into the closet, the sixth under the sink, and the seventh hid in the grandfather clock. But the wolf found them all, opened its jaws and swallowed one by one. Only one thing he did not find the youngest, who hid in the clock. Having eaten his fill, the wolf left. He stretched out on a green meadow under a tree and fell asleep. Soon an old goat came home from the forest. Oh, what did she see there? The door was wide open. The table, chairs, benches were overturned. The wash basin was broken. Pillows and blankets were thrown from the bed. She began to look for her children, but she could not find them anywhere. I called them by name, but no one answered. She went up to the clock. And in response there was a thin voice of the youngest kid. She took him out of there. And he said that a wolf came and ate everyone. How the goat cried for her poor children. Finally, she left the house. And the youngest kid ran after her. She came to the meadow, so a wolf was lying by the tree and snoring. So that the branches were trembling. She looked at him from all sides and saw that in his swollen belly something was moving and floundering. She guessed that these were her children, and was very happy that they were still alive. She told the kid to run home as quickly as possible and bring scissors, a needle and thread. Then the goat cut the belly of the wolf with scissors, and from there one kid stuck out its head. And then the others jumped out all six, and nothing bad happened to them. What a joy it was! They began to hug their mother, jump and dance. Then the old goat said it would be nice to teach the wolf a lesson while he was still sleeping. They pulled stones and stuffed them into the wolf's belly. An old goat sewed up his belly, but he did not notice anything, never even moved. The wolf slept, got to his feet and felt such a thirst in his belly that he decided to drink water from the well. He barely approached the well, bent down to the water, and heavy stones pulled him to the bottom of the well. Seven kids saw this and began to dance for joy with their mother. That's how they taught the evil wolf a lesson. The queen lived in a beautiful castle. She had a daughter whom she dreamed of. The child had black hair and snow white skin. Therefore, they named her Snow White. The queen soon died. The king did not grieve for a long time, 
A year later he brought a new queen to the palace. She was beautiful, but angry. The woman brought a magic mirror with her. Every day she admired her reflection in him and asked him the same question, who is the most beautiful in the world? The mirror has always told only the truth. Therefore, it honestly praised the beauty of the queen, and the woman beamed with happiness. Snow White grew, and every year her beauty blossomed brighter. And now, once again, speaking to the mirror, the queen heard in response that now she is not the most beautiful in the world, but Snow White. The queen was not going to endure this in her own palace. She ordered her faithful servant to lead the princess into an impenetrable thicket and kill. But the servant could not, even for the sake of the queen, kill the sweet girl. He brought the princess into a dark forest and let her go. And he himself returned to the castle and told the queen that he had followed her order. For a long time, the princess wandered through the forest, along the way she was helped by all kinds of forest inhabitants. Snow White was very kind to them and therefore they became strong friends. In the evening, the princess accidentally stumbled upon a small house. She went into it and saw that there was no one in the house. The table was set for seven people, and there were seven cots in the bedroom. And everything in this house was very small. Therefore, Snow White realized that seven little people live here. After a long and difficult journey, she lay down on one of the beds and fell fast asleep. The seven dwarfs returned home late at night. They were greatly surprised by the appearance of an unexpected guest. Sleeping Snow White was so charming that the dwarves decided to let her sleep and did not wake her. Morning has come. Snow White woke up, saw the seven dwarfs and was scared. But they were affectionate with her and the girl told about her misfortune. They immediately liked Snow White and the dwarfs invited her to stay with them. Moreover, she agreed to take care of the house cooking, washing and cleaning. Every morning the gnomes went to the mountains to mine gold and precious stones and returned late at night. Leaving for work, they warned Snow White to be afraid of the evil stepmother and not open the door to strangers. At this time, the queen, as usual, went to the secret room to talk to the magic mirror. But the mirror suddenly said that she was not the most beautiful in the world, but Snow White. That the princess is still alive and lives with the gnomes in the house. The queen became very angry and decided to deal with Snow White herself. She went to a secret room and cooked a poisonous venomous apple there. It was very beautiful on the outside, but if someone ate even a piece, he would certainly die. When the apple was ready, the queen changed into an old merchant and came to the house of the dwarfs. Seeing the sweet old woman, Snow White felt sorry for her. She did not suspect anything and left the house. The old woman treated the girl to a ripe apple and said that if she eats this apple, she will remain young and beautiful forever. Snow White believed her and as soon as she bit the apple, she fell down dead and stopped breathing. The contented queen went to the palace. In the evening, the dwarves returned from work and saw Snow White lying on the ground. She was not breathing. They sobbed so loudly and lamented that their cry was heard by the handsome prince, who was hunting in the forest nearby. It became interesting to him what kind of howl arose that scared away all the animals. And when the prince found the house of the dwarves, he saw Snow White. She was so beautiful that the young prince immediately fell in love with her. He persuaded the dwarves to take her with him to the castle, because there he has doctors who can cure Snow White. The dwarves allowed it. Then the prince ordered his servants to carry the princess on their shoulders. And when they were carrying her, it happened that the servants stumbled over some bush, and from the concussion a piece of a poisonous apple fell out of Snow White's mouth, and she woke up. Seeing the young prince, the girl also fell in love with him and agreed to marry him. They also invited their wicked stepmother to the wedding. Out of anger that Snow White is still alive, 
and that now a long and happy life awaits her, the queen broke the magic mirror and never looked at it again.